Here we're going to look at a nice little problem that has to do with Pascal's triangle and thus binomial coefficients as they make up Pascal's triangle. And it comes from the 1999 Friendly Mathematics Competition, which is an intercollegiate mathematics competition among colleges in Indiana. So that's in the US. Okay, so let's look at the statement of this problem. It says, are there any three consecutive entries from the same row of Pascal's triangle in ratio one to two to three? So let's just go ahead and recall what Pascal's triangle looks like. So I've drawn it right here. So it starts off with a single entry of one, and then we have one, one is in the second row. And then how we form all the rest of the rows is by taking two terms in the previous row and adding. So one plus one is two, so that gives you a two there. And then you put extra values of one on the outside, and then you can continue adding down. So notice one plus two is three, two plus one is three. And then if we wanted to go further, we would get an extra one here. Three plus one is four, three plus three is six, one plus three is four, and then we get an extra one there. And I wanna recall, so we're not gonna prove this or anything, but I wanna recall that we can also write this Pascal's triangle via binomial coefficients. So the first row is just zero choose zero. The second row is one choose one and one choose zero. The third row is two choose zero, two choose one and two choose two, and then so on and so forth. So that means the nth row is going to look like this. So it'll look like n choose zero. So that's the first entry from the nth row. n choose one, n choose two. Maybe some arbitrary entry will be n choose k all the way up to n choose n. Now you may know that like n choose zero is one and n choose n is one, and then n choose one is n, and then also there's some sort of symmetry to this, but we're not actually gonna use that in this case. We'll just use the closed formula for a binomial coefficient. So maybe let's recall that real quick. So here we'll recall that n choose r is equal to n times n minus one all the way down to n minus k plus one over r factorial. And this is the proper definition that can be used as long as you have a natural number or I should say a non-negative integer in the bottom. You can have really an element from any associative algebra in the top. And so you can generalize this to binomial coefficient with say a complex number or even a quaternion a quaternion or something. So that's pretty interesting. But if you have a natural number up top, then there's maybe a more familiar way to write this down, and that is as n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial. Good. So now that we have this idea of the nth row and then a closed form for an arbitrary binomial coefficient, let's look at what we mean by consecutive entries. So that means we're gonna need, well, in this case, three consecutive entries. So we'll need n choose k. We'll need the one right after that, which is n choose k plus one, and the one right before that, n choose k minus one. So I'm using this technique of introducing some symmetry into the problem. This is not strictly necessary here because it's not that, um, complicated of a solution, but notice I symmetrize this with the central term n choose k. Okay, and then let's go ahead and write this um, ratio condition as an equation. So notice that the ratio condition is the following equation. So we want the second one divided by the first one to be two times one. In other words, we want the second one to be twice the first one. So in other words, we'll have n choose k is equal to two n choose k minus one. So that's one condition. And then the other condition is that the third binomial coefficient must be three halves the second binomial coefficient. So we're comparing it to the second one instead of the first one because we've symmetrized this thing so that the second one is like the simplest one. Okay, so that means we're going to have this third one, n choose k plus one, will be equal to three halves the second one, n choose k. But just to keep everything as whole numbers, let's go ahead and take this two over here and write it um, on the other side of the equation. Okay, so now let's go ahead and write these using 
the definition of the binomial coefficient, which we have right above. So this is the same thing as n factorial over k factorial n minus k factorial is the same thing as two times n factorial over k minus one factorial times n minus k plus one factorial. Good, so that's what we get here. But now notice a bunch of simplification can happen. So notice this n factorial can cancel this n, n factorial. We'll just divide both sides by n factorial. And then this k minus one factorial can cancel this down to just being k because we're using the fact that k factorial is equal to k times k minus one factorial. Great, and then similarly, this n minus k factorial can cancel all but the very top term of this. So we have this cancels this thing down all the way just to the top term. And again, we're gonna use the fact that n minus k plus one factorial is the same thing as n minus k plus one times n minus k factorial. So it might seem like we have a mess here, but let's go ahead and rewrite this so that we can see it a little bit more clearly. So left on the left-hand side is one over k, and on the right-hand side we have two over n minus k plus one. Great, but now we can cross multiply so we don't have any more fractions. That gives us 2k equals n minus k plus one, which is the same thing as 3k equals um, n plus one. Okay, fantastic. And now we can do the same thing over on this side of the equation. So, or sorry, over on this side. So we're gonna have two, and then this is gonna be n factorial over k plus one factorial, n minus k minus one factorial. Great. And then on the left hand side, or on the right hand side, we'll have three, and then n factorial over k factorial, n minus k factorial. Now let's see what simplifies here. So these numerators cancel again, so the n factorials cancel down to one. But now this k factorial is gonna factor this k plus one down to just k plus one instead of k plus one factorial. And then this guy right here, this n minus k minus one factorial is gonna cancel this one down just to n minus k. So we're left with two over k plus one equals three over n minus k. So let's see, after cross multiplying, that's gonna give us two n minus two k equals three k plus three. So we can kind of put this together to notice now we have 5k equals 2n minus 3. So there I just moved the 2k over to the other side of the equation and subtracted 3 from both sides of the equation. So I have this system of equations that I can use to solve for n and k. So I'll go ahead and clean up the bottom of the board and we'll finish it off. So previously we determined that if we had consecutive entries in the nth row of Pascal's triangle, so n choose k minus one, n choose k, and n choose k plus one, that were in ratio one to two to three, then n and k must satisfy the following system of equations. So hopefully this will have a solution within the positive integers. That's the only thing that would make this make sense because otherwise we would be outside of Pascal's triangle. Or if K is non-positive integer, or I should say a non-negative integer, then the whole thing falls apart. So let's go ahead and make sure we have a solution that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this first equation and multiply it by two so the coefficient of N is the same in both. So if I multiply this by two, that's gonna give me 6K equals 2N plus two, and now I have 5K equals 2N minus three. But that sets me up really well. I can subtract the second equation from the first equation, and notice that we have 2N minus 2N, so that's good. I have 6K minus 5K, so that's gonna give me K. And then I have two minus minus three, so that's gonna give me K equals five. So we're in luck because k needed to be a non-negative integer for this to make sense in the first place. Now let's go ahead and plug this back maybe into this equation. 
So we'll take this k equals 5, plug it back into this equation, and notice that that gives us 15 equals n plus 1. In other words, we have n equals 14. And that's good as well, because now we've got our three consecutive entries from Pascal's triangle. We have 14 choose 4, we have 14 choose 5, and then finally we have 14 choose 6. And by the, all of this calculation we did, these are guaranteed to be in ratio 1 to 2 to 3. But I went ahead and checked and calculated these. And what you can do is calculate this using the formula, simplify everything down, and you'll see that this is 1,001, this is 2,002, and this is 3,003. And so indeed, we did find a solution. And that's a good place to stop.